Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about um, uh, specifically an article on ICV2. Uh, ICV2 is a really interesting um, website. They deal with um, the industry of tabletop, so board games, role-playing games, collectible card games, um, and really t tabletop role-playing games are just a small portion of it. But more than any other site I've ever been able to see, ICV2 is focused on the business aspects of tabletop role-playing games. Not because they care about tabletop role-playing games, but because they care about tabletop, right? And tabletop role-playing games are, are games that are played on the table. They're just as important as board games and collectible card games to us. They're not as important as that to ICV2. But ICV2 is dedicated to coverage of the tabletop gaming industry. And role-playing games are part of that, so they pay attention to them. Uh, and I, the hardest numbers I've ever seen come out for the, industry, for the tabletop role-playing industry, the most concrete numbers, the best collected numbers come out of ICV2. Um, I think back in like 2017, they 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 did some work that allowed people to calculate that the entire industry of tabletop role plays and games is between 75 and 90 million dollars a year, which is an incredibly small market. Well, uh, recently, uh, specifically on uh, November 29th, uh, one of their columnists, Scott Thorne, did an article, rolling, article called Rolling for Initiative, a case for the possible sale of Wizards of the Coast being on the horizon. And he presented evidence that Hasbro might be thinking about selling Wizards of the Coast. So I want to talk about this article. So uh, it's really fascinating. Scott Thorne uh, put forward the idea, and he said the following. He said that uh, here's why he thinks that um, Wizards of the Coast could be positioning WotC for a sale. I, I, I think he's right. Uh, after hearing his evidence, he's got a lot of, and I'll list them off. So one, he says Hasbro never really wanted to deal with Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering. Also, we should say, when you're selling Wizards of the Coast, that's what you're selling. You're selling Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering, which is interesting because Dungeons and Dragons, you know, for at least since actually Dungeons and Dragons since the mid '90s has not been able to stand on its own. It's always been collected, you know. So TSR. All they cared about was Dungeons and Dragons. That was their their you know their their biggest deal. But since the midnight since 1998, when it was bit when when Wizards of the Coast purchased Dungeons and Dragons, and the uh, and also purchased the the rights to make the um, the the Pokemon card game, which they no longer Pokemon collectible card game, which Wizards of the Coast does no longer has the rights to that. And Magic the Gathering, and Magic the Gathering was insanely hot in 1998. So when, so Wizards of the Coast bought, um, Wizards of the Coast bought Dungeons and Dragons, Pokemon, and Magic. Uh, actually, they already owned Magic, but they bought Pokemon and D and D from. Uh, they they just kind of collected these up. Actually, uh, I'm sorry, Wizards of the Coast had the license for for Pokemon, and they had Magic. They gobbled up Dungeons and Dragons, um, and I think they, you know, and so, and then at that point, Hasbro bought that, bought it from them, and in 2000, I think 2000 forward, uh, Wizards, uh, Hasbro owned Wizards, of course, and they still own Wizards, of course, which means they own D&D, and they own, um, and they also own Magic the Gathering, right? So now that, so, so one of the things is when, when D&D gets sold, it's not going to be like, do we want to buy D&D? They're buying Magic the Gathering, which is... Still, the number one collectible card game in the world by far. It started the genre. It's still the number one in the genre. So when Dungeons and Dragons gets sold, we won't even know if they want Dungeons and Dragons still, right? It's because Magic the Gathering is is attached to it, and it's it's a it's a cash cow. Like it makes money. Even I do think CCGs may be declining, right? Not, and you could take the whole 2020 pandemic thing out because it affects pretty much. It affects every business almost the same, with very few exceptions, right? So, of course, absolutely, magic is currently impacted, but that doesn't mean it's going to be impacted once we're past this pandemic thing. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so, but but Scott um, Scott Thorne, the columnist for ICV2, he said the following: He said Hasbro never really wanted to deal with Dungeons and Dragons or Magic Gathering. I think he's 100% right on that. I think Hasbro bought the you know bought Wizards of Coast really to get the um, to get the Pokemon license, which they've lost, right? So now they're like, oh, what are we going to do with this? 
Now, I think they realize the value in these brands, and they have they have guardian them very well, and and these things have done extremely well under Hasbro. But I'm not sure Hasbro has really invested in them, right? The other one is Hasbro knows board games, right? When it comes to games, tabletop role playing games and collectible card games is never their strong suit. They definitely know no board games, and they really have, you know, um, that's their primary focus. I think, you know, overall Hasbro really has never D and D and and MC, you know, and Magic the uh, Magic the Gathering MTG have never really been part of their their stable they care about, right? And when I say that, like. What does care? What do they care about? My Little Pony, Star Wars, Transformers—some of the biggest IPs in the world, right? And so, you know, if you're putzing around with like, who knows Magic Gathering and D? Who knows? First of all, Magic Gathering makes money. It's got one of the best business models in all of gaming, right? But and D and D does is a terrible business model, but it's but it is an incredibly recognizable name, and it, like. If you do a history of America from 1974 to now, it doesn't matter what kind of, like, d and is going to show up in it. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, right? It doesn't matter if you're talking about video games. It doesn't matter if you're talking about crime. It doesn't matter if you're, you're talking about gaming. It doesn't matter if you're talking about fiction. Like, d and is going to show up on that map. It's, it's, it is a piece of Americana. It is a piece of American history, right? So really, really fascinating. Uh, the third point that Scott Thorne made was that they were trying to that he thinks Hasbro is trying to clean up the company, and he cites the two uh, and and there's good evidence for this. Uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman both sued Wizards of the Coast recently, and Gale Force Nine su uh, sued Wizards of the Coast, and it looks like from the outside looking in that both of those are because contracts got got ended close and ended quickly, right? Uh, in both cases. So if that's the case, why would you close out? Why would you start closing out contracts with all these like little side companies? Well, it would make a sale a lot easier. There you go. Um, so the next question. So all of that. So those are the three reasons. I think those are really good indicators. Here's another one. 2020 pandemic, right? Um, just like every other country, country company in the world. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Hasbro is having to go through all this, you know, this stuff. It's you know, and so one, it um, they took a hit on their. I remember looking before the pandemic, and I track Hasbro stock. They're up around one hundred and ten dollars, and now their stock, you know, Hasbro stock is um, is much much lower. Last time I I checked it, it was like in the seventies, right? So that was like a forty dollar, um, you know, hit on uh, on their stock price, which is absolutely brutal just terribly challenging right um and you know it's that's it's brutal now it's all the way back up to 96 dollars now so that is so you know but they're going through the pandemic everybody's like oh we got to get through another and doesn't look like the 2020 pandemic is anywhere close to done looks like we got six to 18 more months of this nonsense right so companies like hey maybe we get some cash flowing and you know here a few billion dollars Right, and actually, I'm going to talk about the price separately, um, but uh, you know, at some money that could come in, right, and and especially from something like that's kind of a, like a, um, yeah, it, something that's not your favorite thing, right? <laughs> There's an old saying for that that I'm going to trying to be more uh, more careful with my language, right? So, uh, so, uh, so basically. Um, so basically, they they're in this position where. So I just wanted to comment on Scott Thorne's article. I think his theory is right. I think his his positive is right. They definitely, you know, when you look at all the, you know, and and the 2020 pandemic, the fact that they could you get a quick injection of cash, that's me adding one more, you know, to the pile. I think he's absolutely right. Also, I think that Kate Welch's exiting of the company, that might, you know, one. If they're selling to a new company, there's no way they're going to do a new edition, right? So if they weren't going to do a new edition, and I personally feel that the the leaving of Kate Welch from from 
uh, from Wizards of the Coast recently is massively important in the history of Dungeons and Dragons. I don't think we fully understand what's happening, but I think it's part of it. I don't know how it connects, but I think it's a puzzle people piece, and I'm still turning it to see which way it fits. But I'm, I'm convinced it's a piece to the puzzle, right? So uh, I totally agree. Now, uh, there's one more thing. I, uh, I So I just want to say uh, I... I read Scott Thorne's column. I really think you should check out Scott Thorne's column uh, on ICV2. It's called Rolling for Initiative, a case for the possible sale of Wizards of the Coast being on the horizon. I think he's dead on right. right? And I'd love to think, I'd love to hear what you think. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. Um, please uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.